Hey YouTube, what is up? Um, today we're going to talk about ACDC load line overclocking and I'm going to sh show you guys what it is and how to set it up and why it is beneficial. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to load optimize defaults. That way you guys can see that we are running on defaults. So I just load it up and we're going to be using a 10700K today. So let's get to it. Why do we need uh, ACDC load line overclocking? Well, let's just cut to the chase. What is ACDC load line? As you can already see, when we go into the VF point offset, we can see that ACES is telling us at ACDC load line 001 are 10700k at 51 and 50 gigahertz we'll be receiving uh, a volt of 127 and 132 at the respective uh, point frequencies so what ACDC load line overclocking is is Essentially, you just change one value uh, from the default um, 0.6 milliohms that ACES defaults to, or in some cases 0.9. We will change it to, for my particular case, I've already tested this, we're going to go to 0 0.3 milliohms because that works for my chip. Now for your chip, if you have a golden sample, you can straight up just go to 0, 0, 001 milliohms and it will set your voltage to the lowest uh, possible. Now some people like to set it to 0, 0, 001 and then they go up from there, but I just prefer to go set one number and forget it. And we, we were going to also set a load line calibration to probably level four because we know that has good transient response. And what transient response is, is basically when the CPU changes load from a, a, a load on, a, on the chip, like a, let's say gaming load at 50% CPU utilization to, let's say, a lower CPU utilization of 20%, it just responds faster at an LLC of level four. So that's why we're going to do that. Now, but the first thing we have to do is we got to change our CPU bolt uh, boot uh, setup. And we're going to change it to turbo because we want to be able to see our uh, turbo voltages when we boot up into BIOS because that is important. So I'm going to set it right here. Boot performance, go to advanced CPU configuration, CPU power management turbo and we're going to also change the xmp setting and we're just going to load it all up so you guys can see what happens so i'm going to save and exit all i did was xmp level two uh number two and we changed the boot performance mode setup and i'm going to show you the uh boot voltage at my stock setting and we're going to actually measure the uh the actual voltage at the back of the CPU right now with my um, multimeter that I've already set up. So first we, we get into the BIOS. We're gonna see I'm at four seven gigahertz, one two, one seven. That's our set uh, vid that the CPU is requesting. And at the back of my uh, motherboard, I'm going to measure the voltage with you guys in real time. So we want direct current because it's a direct current. Uh, hopefully you guys can see that. You can see that. And I'm going to measure it and try to get it all on camera for you guys to see. So here we go. Put my probes there and there. Remember, we're at one, two, one, seven or so, and right now we're getting one, two, one, zero. That's pretty good.
I'm gonna also try to get you guys a shot of how I did it. Got my two multimeter prongs, probes. I'm gonna hit ground with the black one. I know that's ground because I've chucked it. And I'm gonna hit the back top of the MLCC. And that, that gives me my voltage. Now you can also hit ground there which I, I've checked and that's ground. And then you would you would touch the top of one of the MLCCs and and that will get you your um, voltages. Now I'm just gonna show you guys a close up how you touch it. Just touch the top right there. And that's all. You you don't want to touch the the adjacent ones, you just want to touch one of the MLCCs. Now this is how I touch the ground here. But you're gonna to have to figure out which one's ground on your own. But this one was definitely ground for me. That that just holds the CPU bracket in place. But anyways, that that's our stock setting. So we're getting a, a set of one two seven uh, one two one seven in the BIOS, and you just saw me measure the um, voltage of the back of the CPU at one two uh, one zero volts. And that's our stock setting basically. And ACES sets us up at, I think, the SFID of the typical case, which is 0.6 milliohms. The best case is 0.01 milliohms. The worst case is 0.9 milliohms. And the Intel failsafe uh, case is 1.1 milliohms. I, I haven't tried trained, but um, yeah, I just go straight for, well, I've already done the testing. My, uh, 10700K does great at 0.3 uh, milliohms. So anyways, without further ado, we're just gonna go straight to it. Let's adjust the internal CPU power management. And at the very bottom, we got Intel architecture ACDC load line. And we're just gonna type 0 0.3, 0 0.3, go back. I'm gonna change the load line calibration to level four recommended and they know why it's recommended. Again, it has great transient response and we're gonna see what voltages we're gonna get. Hopefully we get, um, oh, let, me guys sh let me show you guys. So hopefully we get what the prediction score is is showing us down there and if i do a manual overclock of four seven whoops we should get a prediction score one one seven hopefully we get close to that but we're gonna just find out right now let's save and exit save changes and reset and we're gonna Go for it. Now, you guys may be wondering, why are we doing this? Uh, why are we using ACDC load line? Well, basically, it's just one setting. It'll adjust all your uh, voltages from that VF curve. And yeah, your CPU will basically run the way you want it to run. You can set the per core overclock. We're at one, one seven two. My prediction was one, one seven eight, and I'm gonna go ahead and measure the back for you guys so you can see what the back is. And I'm using an Asus uh, Z490F motherboard, just for reference. One one six seven. That that's pretty pretty close for what we're doing, and yeah. So, anyways, as I was saying, why we do this is because it's a, a one shot adjustment, and our CPU will basically step in the VF curve. Let's get this to automatic. It'll step in this VF curve. 
See my 117 is a little higher at the, should be between 46 and 48, but my 47 is kind of pretty much at the 48. Uh, basically, we just shifted the entire curve up a little higher because this is at 0.01, we're at 0.3. If your CPU needs 0.4, you go a little higher and it'll just shift. Now, now I'm gonna show you visually what it is. And yeah, uh, we haven't done any, any uh, overclocking yet. As you guys can see here, it's gonna be on automatic. Uh, CPU core ratio, but you you can absolutely just go ahead and go bonkers and 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 change what you want here. Say 50, 50, 51, 51, 51, 52, 52, 52. Whoops, 52, 52. And your CPU, because you had the VF, uh, I mean the Intel ACDC set. If your VF curve should be about one four two for the 5.2 gigahertz it'll 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 use that when you when the load allows the three cores to use a multiplier of 52 your cpu will see a voltage of 142 and and i've done no manual uh voltage tweaking basically so so that's the advantage of using acdc load line and here you go you can see our voltages are left at automatic. The only thing I've changed is the ACDC load line. And I'm gonna show you guys the the VF curve in the computer, and then we're gonna go overclocking in with Intel XTU. And yeah, that that'll be it. Now I know this setting's already stock, and um, I'm not gonna show you guys how I bench. Uh, for stability, I'm sure you guys know how to do that. You can use Prime 95 just using a blend test. I would recommend you can go bonkers and do the small FF uh, some things with AVX, no AVX. You can you can do that crazy load, but I, I just go with a regular blend uh, for stability, or I use something like Cinebench uh, R32. So let's get to it. Uh, you're, you're going to need to have Intel XTU. Um, I like it. It's Intel's product. They they set this all up. And I'm going to show you what the ACDC load line is doing for you guys. Oh, I, I, I should have showed you guys the stock uh, VF curve. Maybe we can show you that after at the end. But let's see. This video is already going up to 13 minutes. I just want to keep this short and sweet for you guys. Last, uh, let me get you guys the, yeah, we'll just go here. So first off, I mean, we're just at stock. <laughs> 4.7 gigahertz, we don't need to run a benchmark, but we're going to run the VF curve, scan the default VF curve. I mean, our settings are basically default. Anyways, so I hit scan. The default is scanning the default VF curve because I've only adjusted the voltage and you saw I went from a 1217 volt stock to a 117 volt. So we 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 down undervolted and we just used ACDC. And now we can see when my CPU go well, you can't see it in this video, but I'm at the 50x. When I go 50x, my CPU will be at one to five volts for the point voltage. And and why this is great is because you, you guys can see right now I'm at active 47 all core. We, well, we can just go straight to uh, overclocking from here um, in the desktop, and because I've already set the the voltage curve, it'll it'll scale the volts for us. So I just went ahead and did five two five two five one five one. Uh, let me do five one here, and then fifty fifty. Maybe you guys can see it better here. So we're gonna do an overclock. 
and see what happens. So I did the overclock, hit apply. I'm gonna do a applied VF curve. It's, it should be the same since the stock already does 5.1 gigahertz. It, it shouldn't show the 5.2 because that's off the graph, but yeah, it's pretty much the same. Um, you guys can't tell here, but I'm gonna run an all core load. Let's just do a CPU a benchmark, the XTU bench. Hopefully you guys can see this in the video. It's, it's a little hard with these colors, I think, this focus. But that's 5, 1, 1, 2, 7, 1, 3. We'll do a benchmark and then we're just going to go back to stock. So that way you guys can see um, why I do it this way. This voltage, we get a 3539 and I'm going to jump back to stock so you guys can see. And and I'm sure you, you'll have questions. Just you can post them in the comments below and I usually try to be pretty helpful. So I'm going to go back to stock. I think it's 4848. Eight, four, eight. Is that stock? Let's double check. No, it's not that one. Active, active, system defaults. There we go. System defaults. Oh, just missing one, four, seven. I, I don't know why they do that. They do five, one, five, one, and then goes to four, eight. But okay, we're going to go back here. We're pretty much at stock and we're going to do a, a benchmark. Here's stock. We're going to hit the benchmark. It's going to go. Now you can see I'm at 117, which is what we, we set in BIOS kind of. Our set uh, voltage is the vid is 117. And you can see the core frequency is 4.7, 4.3. It jumps around, but it's essentially um, back to stock. And, and that that's basically it. That, that's my uh, overclocking. It, it'll adjust the voltage to a curve set by you. So in a way, you're kind of using Intel's stock setting but you're also manually adjusting your voltage. Instead of one voltage, one point, you adjust the whole curve, which is actually kind of cool. So here's our score, 337. It still has a curve, there's a curve. I'm gonna show you guys one last thing, how to check uh, in the desktop for the um, Intel architecture ACDC load line. Here we go, yes. We want the summary page, and in the summary page, under your CPU, I don't know if you guys can see all this, mine is a 10700K. Move this over here. Scroll, scroll, scroll. And here we go. We got an NIA domain load line ACDC 0.3 milliohms. There we have it. If you guys uh, like this video, just give me a thumbs up. You don't have to subscribe. And hopefully I can show you guys more cool things with what to do on your, your Intel architecture CPU. Yeah, thanks. Have a good one. Oops.